Welcome to the tutorial on poster design in CorelDRAW. Now poster design is quite a bit different than any other design piece that may be done simply because there are very few design rules that should be followed. There is no real size restriction or layout considerations. For this reason poster design offers freedom that no other document can. The lack of guidelines can really open up the possibility to show the creativity in the process. In this tutorial, we'll take a look at some of the different tools that can be used to create eye-catching posters that can be framed. Sweet Soulful Jazz is the theme of the poster. To advertise an evening of jazz music, start by gathering the content. For this poster, we want something simple, classy, and at the same time make it look a bit hip and flashy. When I hear jazz, I think of sax and trumpet, so including an instrument that is indicative of jazz just makes sense. We'll use a trumpet and a few bars of sheet music. Because the instrument and the music has a fair amount of detail, we'll use a simple background. Contrasting a simple background with busy elements will help them to stand out and allow the viewer's eye to be drawn towards the important information. To create my poster, I'm going to start with a new document. I'm going to set it to tabloid size page, Make sure I have RGB and 300 dpi selected, and then simply click OK. First, I'll double click the rectangle tool to add a page frame, and then I'm going to use my interactive fill tool. Click and drag, and then on the interactive property bar, I'm going to change this from linear down to radial. I'm going to move the white control handle to the top center third, and the black to the center of the page. On the white, I'm going to select my grass green. Let's bring this down a little bit more. And now it's time to add the elements. Hold down the shift key and I'm going to double click on my rectangle tool. This will add a frame around this object. I'm going to right click on this frame and select frame type, create empty power clip frame. This will give me a frame that I can power clip my clip art images into. I'm going to go to import. I'll grab the first image that I want to bring in, which is my trumpet, simply click and drag, and I can drop it right on top of the power clip frame, and it will put it inside for me. I'll bring out my sheet music as well, so click and drag and drop that directly on top. Now the one thing you may notice is that it did not power clip into this frame. The reason being is I did not hold down the letter W on my keyboard. So let me just do that right now. That's now power clipped inside here, and if I double click on this frame, it brings me into the edit mode. I'm going to position the trumpet where I want, rotate this 30 degrees counterclockwise, and I'll resize this and put this into position. I'll do the same with my music. Rotate this 30 degrees counterclockwise, resize and position this, and now finally for the sheet music, I'm going to simply left click on my white. On the trumpet, I want to give this a bit of a glow. I want to make it stand out. So from my interactive flyout tool, I'm going to select drop shadow. On the interactive property bar, under presets, I'm going to select small glow. I'll change this to 80. And my feathering, leave that at 20. I'm going to grab the color green, and now from the Arrange menu, Break Drop Shadow Group Apart, I will tap my space bar, deselect it, and select just the drop shadow, and then Control D allows me to duplicate this. I'm going to give this duplicate a different color. I'm going to make it a bright green. That will give it more of a glow. So now Control click outside of the page takes me out of the edit mode. I'm now ready to enter my text. I'm going to select my text tool, click off the page, and I'll type my string of text. I'll select the text, change the font to Gabriola, 65 points, and now by clicking on my Options drop-down, I'm going to set this to a stylistic set 7. Position my cursor between the, the word Of and Sweet, hit Enter, and now ensure that this is set to Center Justified. 
change the color to white. I'll rotate this 30 degrees as well and then position this on my document. Next is to add the information about the actual occasion itself. Import. I have a text file with that information in it. I'll simply click on Import, click OK, and I'll click my cursor once. This comes in as paragraph text. I need to convert this to artistic text. So from my text menu, I'll go down to Convert to Artistic Text. Write Justify. And I'm going to change this font to Bodoni. Position this where I want it. Change the color to white. And I'm going to make this a little bit larger. Now the final step for this poster is to bring in the logo. Again, import. I'll scroll down to where I have my logo. And import this file. Click off the page and now I can position this in place. I'm going to ignore the power clipping. Left click to make it white and I'll make this a little bit larger. And there you have it. It's easy to see that creating a poster in Corel Draw can be fun, especially when you understand that most of the design rules can be thrown out the window. There are just a couple of things to remember. A simple background can be contrasted with complex imagery and vice versa. Use color and contrast to emphasize important information. Make text easy to read from a distance and have fun showing your creativity. Poster design is probably one of the most rewarding of project types simply because of the ability to dig deep into your creativity and show off. So go for it.